This video covers the musculoskeletal examination of the shoulder. It will revise basic shoulder anatomy and demonstrate a systematic examination including special tests for selected pathologies. The glenohumeral joint is a ball and socket joint, but unlike the acetabulum of the hip, the glenoid fossa is shallow to allow for a greater range of movement. Much of the stability of the joint therefore comes from the rotator cuff tendons and capsular ligament. The result is that the shoulder is somewhat unusual in having moving bone surrounding the rotator cuff tendons, making it susceptible to impingement and tear. As with any examination, wash your hands, introduce yourself, gain consent from the patient and ask about pain. For examination of the shoulder, ideally the patient should be exposed to the waist. Systematic examination of the shoulder follows the basic orthopaedic format of look, feel, move and special tests. On inspection, look at both shoulders and check for any asymmetry. Look for bony abnormalities such as deformity, soft tissue abnormality such as loss of muscle bulk and swelling, and skin ab abnormality such as scars, erythema and lacerations. Start medially at the sternum and work laterally along the clavicle to the acromion process. Deformity near the middle of the clavicle may suggest a previous clavicular fracture, whereas protrusion of the distal end of the clavicle may suggest AC joint subluxation. Inspect the side of the shoulder, looking in particular for arthroscopy scars, signs of inflammation and assessing deltoid muscle bulk. Look at the scapulae and for any obvious wasting of surrounding muscle. Wasting of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles appear as hollow grooves above and below the spine of the scapula, respectively. OK, could I just get you to push on the wall for me, please? Asking the patient to do this may reveal winging of the scapulae, which may result from damage to the long thoracic nerve supplying serratus anterior. This slide summarises the key findings on inspection. On palpation, feel for deformity, tenderness, temperature and swelling. Start at the sternoclavicular joint, moving along the clavicle to the acromioclavicular joint. Feel for the coracoid process around the acromion process and then move along the spine of the scapula feel for the medial border whilst tenderness in a particular area is fairly non-specific it may provide clues and be consistent with a particular pattern of pathology Tenderness over the acromioclavicular joint may indicate osteoarthritis, while tenderness over the greater tuberosity may indicate impingement or rotator cuff pathology. This slide summarises the key findings on palpation. OK, so now we're just going to do some movements. I'd like you to copy me and let me know if you're in any pain at any point and I'll help you along. Is that all right? First assess active movement, which is without assistance. If the patient cannot complete a full movement actively, it is important to ask whether this is due to weakness or pain. Then assist the patient and assess passive movement. It is important to assess for pain and range of movement. The normal range of motion is 180 degrees of flexion and 50 degrees of extension. If there is pain, ask specifically at what point the pain comes on and when it is relieved. In impingement syndrome, there is typically a painful arc of abduction between around 60 and 120 degrees. Abduction should also be assessed from behind to visualise scapular movement, and the normal range of motion is 180 degrees. OK, now what I'd like you to do is tuck your elbows in and pull your arms out like this. This assesses external rotation although it is important to ensure the patient keeps their elbows tucked in to avoid abduction. External rotation should normally be around 60 degrees and is usually the movement most severely affected in frozen shoulder and is also lost early in glenohumeral joint arthritis. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is reach up as high up on your back with your thumb as you can. Internal rotation may be assessed by seeing how far the patient is able to reach up their back and measuring to the corresponding thoracic vertebra. 
Normally the patient should be able to reach to at least the inferior border of the scapula. Next, test the power of the rotator cuff muscles, asking the patient to push against resistance. Subscapular strength can be assessed in the lift-off test. With the patient's hand behind their back, they should try to lift their arm off the back against resistance. If the patient is unable to reach behind their back, strength can be assessed with a belly press test. It is important to ensure the elbow is kept anterior to the hand to minimise extension. Infraspinatus, and to a lesser degree teres minor, can be tested in external rotation against resistance. Supraspinatus strength is best tested in 30 degrees of flexion and abduction. Compare the two shoulders. Significant weakness in rotator cuff strength may indicate a tear. The vast majority of tears occurs in the supraspinatus tendon. Rotator cuff tears may not be painful. This slide summarises the key findings on movement. There are a number of special tests for impingement, but we will only demonstrate Job's test and Hawkins' test. They are, however, not specific, and so positive results should be taken along with the clinical picture. Job's test, also called the empty can test, is performed by asking the patient to flex their arms to 90 degrees, abducted in a scapular plane, with their thumb pointing outwards. The patient then pushes up against the resistance from the examiner. The patient then points their thumb down, as if emptying a can, and again pushes against resistance. Both actions may be painful in impingement, but it is typically more painful when the thumbs are pointing down, as internal rotation brings the greater tuberosity of the humerus under the acromion process, compressing the supraspinatus tendon. For Hawkins' test, abduct the shoulder and flex the elbow 90 degrees. Passively rotate the patient's arm downwards and repeat while adducting the humerus. Again, internal, i.e. downward rotation of the shoulder, exacerbates impingement pain. Performing this test varying the degree of abduction, as shown, increases its sensitivity. The cross-arm test, also known as the scarf test, is performed by flexing the elbow to 90 degrees and forcibly adducting it across the chest. A positive test is pain specifically over the acromioclavicular joint and may be indicative of osteoarthritis. If the history suggests instability, additional tests may be performed. An anterior and posterior jaw test is performed with the patient seated by stabilising the shoulder girdle with one hand and gripping the proximal humerus with the other and applying anterior and posterior traction force to the humerus to assess the laxity of movements. As always, compare with the other side. The sulcus test may demonstrate inferior instability of the glenohumeral joint and is performed by applying a downward traction force to the epicondyles of the humerus. In a positive test, a sulcus will be visible under the acromion process. Finally, an apprehension test may be performed with the patient either upright or supine. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move your arm back. Let me know if it's painful or if it feels like it's about to pop out, and I'll stop. Okay. Abduct the shoulder and flex the elbow to 90 degrees. And then externally rotate the shoulder whilst watching the patient's face carefully. A positive sign is a look of apprehension on the patient's face as the shoulder feels close to dislocation. This feeling may be relieved by applying pressure on the proximal humerus from in front. This slide summarises the special test used here. As with any orthopaedic examination, to complete you should examine the joints above and below, which in this case is the cervical spine and the elbow, and assess the neurovascular status of the affected limb. Thank the patient and consider ordering appropriate imaging. In summary, examination of the shoulder is best done using the look, feel and move approach with special tests for suspected pathologies such as impingement syndrome and rotator cuff tears.